Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Trail Makers. It's been a while since we played this and my little dude down here, I feel like he's had it easy for too long. Despite his feet still being ingrained into the concrete, he literally can't move. Unless they are just the world's smallest feet, size zero. But today we're going to be trying to create a sonic boom a little bit differently. We're going to try and build like our own centrifuge type thing. You know like the G-force arm that they put astronauts in to test them? Oh yeah, this bloke is going to end up in one very, very soon. So first off, I'm guessing we should build some sort of cockpit. I mean, the space cockpit sort of makes sense for this, I think, just to start with. I'm not entirely sure how speed is measured in this game. I have a feeling it's probably going to be from the cockpit. So if we make this spin about a middle point, then hopefully we can create that sonic boom. But there's only one way to find out. So first off, let's grab, let's just keep things basic. We'll just use two by two blocks. So we've sort of got this on an arm now. I think in the middle, we need some sort of mechanical thing. Possibly a trailer hinge. That's a ball joint. So I imagine that will sort of spin in different directions. So we'll wang that in the middle there. Yep, that's better. And I'm sort of thinking if I just grab a load of these, can I just copy them down? Make a platform. Nice. All right, so then we have a sort of platform. I don't know if that's going to be big enough. Might have to be bigger. But for our propulsion, we just need some rockets. And I'm guessing a dragon engine is probably the best. So we'll wang one there. And I guess we'll probably just shove one on the other side just to try and even it up a bit. So something like that, maybe. Let's let's press B and... Oh, oh dear. Yeah, the ball joint is... It's, it's not working great, is it? Maybe once we get moving, it might be okay. So let's jump in the vehicle and then let's fire up the rockets. We give it a bit of a bit of a wibble no i think i think what's happened is we're sort of we're stuck on the front i'll tell you what then to start should i make this a bit smaller how about that because that shouldn't get caught underneath so let's have a look at this we're sort of flat i'm firing the rockets and it's not moving why is it not moving oh is it like is it a fake ball joint i think it's like not actually a ball i think it might be locked Oh, well, that's annoying. Right, hang on a second. So let's delete this ball joint. And I guess we'll, we'll try a spinning servo. Hopefully I can, like, turn it off. So in these so in these configure settings, I can just get rid of those, I guess. And then, yes, look, it's flat. So if we turn the rockets on, will that actually make us rotate? Yes. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's not ideal. So what I'm wondering, I just I just want to know because like the laws of physics tell me if I make these arms longer, presumably we'll travel faster. I don't know, actually. Depends how this game works. OK, so there's there's definitely a limit to this. The part limit at the top. We can only go to 700 pieces, but I'm sort of wondering maybe it's stability I need to worry about, not the actual weight. All right. So basically I've got this It's very, very lightweight, of course, but it does save so many pieces. So if we turn on the rockets, does this stay down? It sort of does. We're on 97 miles an hour. I feel like that's a good enough test to then lengthen and shorten the arms and see how that affects the speed so let's just select this and we'll move it that way quite a bit and then we'll make the arm longer i mean i could make the other one longer as well but that's just wasting time we only care about this one because that's where the speed is measured so granted this will probably make it more unstable so let's press play and see what the speed does oh yeah easily easily faster 120 130 miles an hour I mean, to be honest, if I leave it running, it goes up to like 138 pretty much. So now let's see what effect it has moving this arm to make it longer as well. Now the force moment is the rotational force, which is caused by putting a force at the end of like an arm. And if you think about levers, the, the further away your force is, the more, the more movement it will produce. So let's see whether that movement equates to speed. So exactly the same rockets. But we've got more moment on the other one. And no, you can see much slower. Now, there's a few reasons for that. I'm going to guess if we toggle in advance the aerodynamics, it's because of this. So in the game, aerodynamics is a big thing. Oh, and I'm quite intrigued how this works, actually. Because aerodynamics, they're all down one side. We're only worried about the aerodynamics above the the joint we don't care about the base because the base ain't going anywhere but you can see a lot of this arm is red aerodynamics which is bad now uh, we've got some green ones which means they don't slow down the vehicle as much but over this side the arrows they're still on this side i thought they would be on that side but i guess it's showing aerodynamics in terms of we're gonna be moving now i want to test how aerodynamics work in this game because i know usually aerodynamics 
actual aerodynamics don't care at all. It's just what part you use to make the arrow a different colour. So my question is, we got to about 110 miles an hour then. If we go into the aerodynamics tab down here, if we place some extremely aerodynamic blocks like that, you can clearly see the, the red arrows, they're now very, very green. And the game sort of calculates aerodynamics in terms of good or bad like this. So if I copy this down, common sense will tell you that's worse than it was before. Like common sense would be rotate it like that. That's much more efficient. But in the game, that doesn't actually matter. As long as these arrows are green, the aerodynamics are better. Now, obviously, this end of the centrifuge is going to be spinning that direction, which means these aerodynamics should have pretty much no effect. They should be on this side, the triangles. But because those arrows are green, I want to know if that's actually made a difference. I might sort of copy a load of these along. So we've got that. Let's just see, does that make a difference? I mean, common sense says no, but computer game development possibly says yes so let's spin this and let's keep an eye on the speed is it going to go above oh it has gone up 117 interesting now you can see that's spinning the wrong way for those triangles to do anything oh no no if i were to put them on the other side is that going to help so this is now the common sense way round. so if we play them that way that should be way better right oh yes it is it is 150 160 miles an hour Okay, so that's good. That means we can apply some common sense to this. So we've got them on the front and the back. Then when we rotate, what speed do we go to this time? 170. Oh, yes. 180. Oh, nice. Nearly 190 miles an hour. <laughs> you got to feel sorry for our bloke in here. He's literally... This is what he's experiencing. It's very fast. Uh, but the thing with aerodynamics is any aerodynamics are worse than no aerodynamics. And obviously, this arm doesn't need to be two bars thick. It could just be one bar thick. So, for my next trick, we will be deleting this arm and we'll be replacing it with literally just aerodynamic wedges. Because I think this will be the most sensible way to attach an arm. And what I'm even going to do, I think I'm going to get rid of this completely. Because, can you see the aerodynamic lines on the front of this spaceship cockpit? They're like a darker colour than the ones on there. So if I were to replace that with an aerodynamic flight seat, this has way, way better aerodynamics, uh, which basically means in the game it will go faster. Uh, but the four, the four points on the front, they also need to be amended. I mean, what I could do if I was being really clever is just do that. So that's aerodynamically sound. We then just need to sort out this rocket engine. And I think now we're located there, we can just put these like next to it. You can see this has some aerodynamic effect there. If we move it right to the front, that gets rid of that completely. So I think that side is done. We'll just we'll pretty much just copy this so it's identical on the other side. Now, in order to attach this rocket, we, we do need parts on the edge. You can't connect at the front. So what I'm going to have to do is just copy one of those underneath there. And then I can just use a very cool part which is this, a flat connector. You can literally bung these on the side and they have no aerodynamic impact. So that is connected, it's fully hidden. So let's see how this new improved design gets on. It's lighter and it should be fully aerodynamic. I'm hoping for big things. So we're, oh, we've cracked 200. Oh my goodness, <laughs> 255 miles an hour. Ooh, I feel like this might actually be possible uh, because it's important to note, we literally, we only have two engines. Now, one thing I did want to try first, if I were to move this thrust this way, which likely does involve copying another one of these triangles under there to hide the engine completely, but I've attached it like that so it's completely hidden. I'm actually, I'm going to do the same on this side as well. All right, so basically for this, I've just moved the engines to the center to see what sort of impact that has. So ready? Let's power them up. I think they're going to take longer to speed up, but perhaps it'll go faster. No, 190. Okay, that does make sense because the old moment stuff, you want your force on the end so it's got more leverage. Uh, but question, if we were to copy these, so we've now got a mixture of the two designs. So basically we've got rockets on the end and in the middle. Does this make the overall thing faster? So 250 we were aiming for roughly. Oh, is that similar? I think that's very similar. Was it 250 or was it 260? Okay then, well, let's delete those and let's move all the thrusters to the end. 
but we'll try we'll try three on either side so here we go three on either side is that gonna crack 250 miles an hour oh 260-ish okay i'm getting a little bit worried that that might be the limit of this design completely let's go back to the build I'm just worried how these arrows affect things. If we were to put these on the back, like common sense says this shouldn't affect anything, but it does make the game show green rather than red. So it might do 262. It, I think that's, that's actually faster, isn't it? Interesting. Right. Well, anyway, let's try making this arm a lot longer. So we've just got one long arm, one short arm. Let's see how this changes things. Oh, it's definitely made the base unstable, but look at the speed. Three, four hundred miles now, nearly. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Are you okay in there, mate? No, is he actually... In I don't think I can see him. Has he turned to jelly? He may have turned to jelly. Oh, no, there he is. You can see his eye and his eyebrow. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> Right, so the good news is that was way faster, but the bad news is we were very, very uneven. So if I were to do the same on this side, so basically move all these over to there, extend these arms in this direction. So we basically got the same thing, but we've got we got symmetrical arms. They're a lot longer. Let's see how this goes. We're definitely a lot more stable. And, oh, look, we're up to 380, 390, 400. Okay, so even arms is the key to being stable. And potentially, we just have to make the arms longer. It is sort of bugging me, though. I know when we did the actual speed test, like the land one, in order to get the vehicle faster, we just made them longer. So I want to know if I were to just do that. So now we've essentially got six engines rather than three. How is this going to do? Oh, 430. It went straight away up to it. And that was the limit. So 433. Three. Let's just double check. If we go back to three engines on either side. Okay, so doubling the energy only adds on an extra like two miles an hour, basically. That was unexpected. Let's just see. I wonder if I were to make all of this arm like engine, would that work? I think I need to do a fair test first. Let's find out. The downside of this is we've now got a lot of red arrows on this side, which shouldn't matter because the rotation, but as we proved earlier, it does matter a little bit. So here we go. What speed are we going to get to? 300, 3, 3, oh no, 4, 3, 3 again. So extra power literally did nothing. Interesting. Or well, if we literally go back to one engine at the end, I want to see what speed that gets us if 3 was actually doing anything. So here we go. Just one engine at the end. Is it going to get to 433 as well? No. So we do need more engines, but only up to a specific point. Two engines get us to 423-ish, as do three and four engines. Okay. So I feel like three engines somehow is the sweet spot, and I guess that perfectly right first time. Not a clue how. Yeah, but let's, let's just keep moving it, I guess. All right. Now this is way wider. Let's see how this does. <laughs> That's quite a long arm. Actually, have I done this symmetrically? I feel like one arm's longer than the other. Still, speed, 380. That's not faster at all. That's way slower. Right, here's the symmetrical version where I actually learned to build properly. Oh, we're up to 500 miles an hour. That is good. We are very close to a sonic boom. I don't even know how a sonic boom will work on this. Does it just do it about the cockpit? I don't know. So question at this stage, will extra power help? Because the arms are longer now, they might need more power. Or is three engines still the sweet spot? I'm doubling it to six. It gets up to speed a lot quicker. 540 nearly. I think that definitely helped. So the longer the arm gets, the more power we're going to need. And the question is, is it better off doing the power like that to save on the aerodynamics of the thing? Oh man, oh man, look how much faster that is. 680 690 so that's the same but making the ends way more aerodynamic we've definitely hit 700 so basically at the ends i just stacked the engines like that now i'm sort of wondering are we at the length where more engines could help it is we got sonic boom it's the world's fastest sonic boom did you see it <laughs> i feel like that was obscured by the by the smoke so next time we do it i'm gonna turn off the engines just so we can see it. Who'd have thought that this would create a sonic boom? <laughs> oh man, that is really cool. Right, here we go then. Up to 750. 
All right, let go. There's the sonic boom. It's, oh, it's so fast. It does actually disappear when you drop below. I mean, not too surprising. This goes up to 830 miles an hour. Now I want to know, can I just keep adding engines? So we've got 12 engines now. How is this going to go? Sonic boom. <laughs> it's so fast. <laughs> Oh, 940. We can easily crack a thousand miles an hour without moving, technically. All right, so I've got 18 on that side, 18 on this side. Oh, okay, we've we've maxed out. I think we've capped out. So what we need to do, we need to make the arms a little bit longer again. Oh no, it looks really slow. It's really slow. 550. Oh, interesting. But does that mean we need more engines? Because there's more there's more drag? Because generally when you get like to really high speeds, you really need a lot more energy because there's just so much there's so much force in front of you. Alright, here we go then. Oh, I think it's it's at the size where the game doesn't like it. The Kraken is trying to attack me. <laughs> Just make it a little bit shorter. And let's go again. Come on, speed. It's not looking good, actually. It's not looking good. Oh, what the hell? What the hell? Something broke. We broke in a big way. <laughs> I think we might have too many engines. They might be too heavy. Let's delete like a few of them. We are nowhere near the sound barrier anymore. So I've just gone back to the design that did work. I'm going to make it slightly longer. Let's see. Is that enough to allow us to crack a thousand miles an hour? Come on. What the hell? Not at all. What the frig? I only made it four squares longer. So if I, if I reduce by two... 9.30. How random that just two little blocks can make that much difference. Okay, one other thing I just sort of thought of. I could potentially get rid of all the aerodynamics in this. If I were to delete these, I'm not, I've never tried this before. So we got a flat connector there. If I copy it this way, then give it a rotate about that axis and then just move it. Oh man, that might work. Yeah, so I'm literally... <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally just cheesing my way to no aerodynamics. I think this is going to work. Yep, completely rigid. Okay. <laughs> Let's play this and see how that goes. Obviously, it's uneven, so it's going to be a little bit dodgy. We got Sonic Boom, though. And then it disintegrated. Okay, I think this is this is a winning formula. And then that is connected to... <laughs> Okay, so we've pretty much gone from quite a bit of aerodynamic resistance to absolutely none. So can we beat a thousand miles per hour? Five hundred, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, look how close it is! Oh, come on, Gabe! <laughs> how close can you get? What if I did just add three more engines? I only need such a small amount of extra speed. All right, please, please. Yes. No. Oh. It's so close. Right, I've made these engines a lot thinner, but longer. So hopefully the power sort of balances out. Or maybe it will just do that and fly off and, and die. Anyway, we got as close as we could. I think we're going to call it a day, guys. Peace, love, and centrifuge buff. Flowers and miles and hour things. I can't even talk words. Bye.